Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here. Welcome back to Darkest Night, turn two. Okay, a quick recap of where we're up to. Priorus and Cassandra are both in the village. They're hoping to deal with Sigma and to deal with the quest nightmares. Talon, the rogue, he's in the forest. He's hoping to avoid uh, the necromancer and the zombies and get a bit of searching done. Whereas Rathimnon, our wizard, he's gone up to the mountains and he's hoping to get rid of the Blight Enigma which is causing us problems searching, or will do, if we don't get rid of it. Okay, so our first player is going to be Rathimnon. So we'll turn over his counter, so he's now on the moon side. And let's have a look at the hero turn. So here we are. In any order, each hero takes a turn. So we've started with Rithymnon. Lose one secrecy if the necromancer is present. He isn't. Lose one secrecy if carrying a holy relic. We're not. He's got no start of turn instructions on the power cards. So now we move to event. Skip this step in the monastery. We're not in the monastery, so we don't skip the step. We've already said the necromancer isn't here, so we can avoid that. Otherwise, we draw an event card. So this is new. We haven't done this yet this game. Let's get the event deck. So here we are, and let's see what the top card is. Ooh, close call. Roll one die, and take the highest. All right. Right, roll one die, and take the highest. I imagine that means, like, you might have something that can give you extra dice. And um, in that case, it would be take the highest. Or you might have some sort of modifier or something like that, I suppose. But as it stands, I think he's only getting one die. So let's see what he can do. And he gets a four. So we lose one secrecy. Well, it's better than losing a grace. So he's now down to four secrecy. Right. So, not too bad, not too bad, I don't think. Right, so he's done his event card. So now, it's his action. And what we want to do is we want to attack. We're going to attack a, bl a Blight and try and, and try and defeat it. So, here's the Blight. It's Enigma. It's got a number four there in the corner. Number four here. So, we've got to roll a four or better. Now, all things considered, he'd just be rolling one dice. So what he's going to do is he's going to use a tactic because it's a combat and he's attacking. So he's going to use lightning strike. He's going to fight with three dice. And if he succeeds, we will exhaust this card. Right. Three dice needed. And he gets a six. So we only needed four or better, so that's great news. We have got rid of this blight. It no longer affects us. Woohoo! So that can go back with the rest of the blights. Take the stand back. And I think that's pretty much the end of turn for Rathimnon, who's done a man's job. So let's just check. End. If any blights are in your location, no, he's got rid of them. And we didn't spend the turn in the monastery, so that's it for Rathimnon. Great stuff. Next up is Talon the Rogue. So here he is, down here. What's he going to do? Well, he's going to search. So we don't have to worry about the zombies yet. That's the end of turn. But what we do have to do is he's in the same location as the Necromancer, so he does lose one secrecy, as well as turn over his uh, token to the moon side. So he's on six secrecy now. And he's going to search. Now the search difficulty is four. So it's a good job we got rid of Enigma, because that would have made the search difficulty five. But as it is, it's four. He's going to use for his... Um, just check there's nothing else. Yeah, he lost the secrecy because the necromancer was present. Oh, he's got an event card. Ha ha. Right, so he's got to do his event first. So let's have a look at what he gets. 
That's upside down. Right. Metamorphosis. Randomly select one of your powers. Spend one grace or place a selected power at the bottom of its deck and draw a card from the same deck. Oh. I don't particularly want to do that because I quite like the threes got. And I've got it all worked out in my brain how he's going to use them. So he is going to spend one grace. He's down to three now. It's not ideal, but I think... I think we're okay. I think um, I think we can afford to do it. So that's that event dealt with. So he's kept his starting. I mean, he could have got a better one, but I do think those are quite good starting um, powers that he's got. So I'm going to keep it. Right. So what's he going to do next? He's going to do his action. And his action is going to be eavesdrop so he's going to use his power card rather than the bog standard search action he's going to use this um, better search action that he's got from his power card so he's going to spend one secrecy but he's going to search with two dice right so loses another secrecy he's down to five secrecy and he's got two dice to search with Actually, can we see that? Let's just move it across. Yeah, I think it's in now. Oh, a six and a four. So that's two successes. What that means is we get to draw two map cards and keep one. So one, two. Let's have a look. The first one is a key. And the second one is Cursed Ashes. Well, the one that we're going to take is going to be the key. Because that's what we want. Now, as mentioned, we're not playing the base game. I do have all the expansions. Whoop. Discard those. So what he's going to do is actually take a mystery card. Because that's what you take now if you gain a key. So here's the mystery deck. Let's have a look what's on top. Treasure hunt. So we get one clue straight off the bat. One clue straight off the bat. So that moves up to one. Catches up the uh, darkness track. And it's random, so I'm going to have to pick where it goes. Some eccentric scholar has hidden caches of scrolls throughout the kingdom, each containing a clue leading to the next. This is permanent, so it always stays in play. If a 5 plus is rolled when searching here, plus 3 clues, and re-randomise re this card's location. So right, we've got to find out where it goes. But that is a chance of running round when we're searching and getting extra clues. So that's pretty funky. So let's roll the dice. See where it's going to go. It's going to go out from the village and the number is two and a two takes it to the ruins what am i moving stigma for this will go in the ruins so let's get a little stand for it there we go so anybody doing a search in the ruins Actually, I'll have to start putting these down, won't I? Otherwise, we won't be able to see them. Bigger board needed. Victory Point Games. Bigger board. Um, so, there we go. Right. So, that's permanent. It's there. We got one for actually getting the mystery card. One clue. Randomly in the ruins. And now if anybody searches there, which is good because there are two keys there. So that means we'll probably get a lot of mystery cards if we go there. So it could be an ideal place for our rogue to go. But as it is, he's done his action. So, and he's found um, some information. He's, he's uh, on a treasure hunt. And he's found our first clue towards getting a holy relic. 
So the end of his turn, if there are any blights in your location that have end of turn effects, we've got to resolve them. Right. Well, the flux cage doesn't. That just has effects that come into play if you enter or leave the location. So that's fine. However, the zombies, like last turn, we have to defend against them. What's he going to do? Well, obviously, he's going to use the same tactic as last time, which is vanish. So uh, it's, no, it's no use fighting him because uh, we can't attack him. We can only defend so we can't get rid of it. So even if we had succeeded uh, at um, a defense check, the, zo the zombies would have stayed. So we may as well just elude them because it's better odds. So tactic, elude with two dice and we gain one secrecy if we roll two successes. So if we get two threes like we did last time, that'll be really cool. Because all the, success, all the um, secrecy is lost, he'll get back. Oh, four and a two. He did succeed. Unfortunately, we didn't get the two successes we wanted to get the secrecy back. But he did succeed, so he's avoided the zombies. And that's the end of Talon's turn. Right, oh, who's next? I think we decided that Cassandra would go next, so... Let's turn her onto the moon side. Right, she's here in the village. And what she's gonna do, she's gonna move Priorus out of the way and she searched the village and she's found where this stigma is in the village. So she's getting ready to confront the stigma, but first what she's gotta do is she's gotta check if the necromancer's present. He isn't, she hasn't got a holy relic. She hasn't got any start of turn instructions. But he does have to draw an event card. So let's have a look what she gets. And she gets Raid. Count the blights in your location. Well, there's one. We lose two secrecy. Bah! Right. So, we lose two secrecy, which is a bit of a blow. And she goes down to for secrecy but that's the event card out of the way now she could concentrate on her action and her action is to take on the stigma which has a might of five so what we have to do is we have to get a success of five otherwise we will lose one grace now that we're in combat and she's attacking it means she can use a tactic and she's going to use charge. So she's going to fight with two dice. So let's pick up two dice. And let's see if we can get a five or better. Oh, two fours. You're joking. Is there anything she can do? No, I don't think so. So she's going to lose a grace. Except she isn't. Because what we have is we have a bonus that the priest can play and he is going to supply that grace instead he's going to sacrifice one of his own graces so that she doesn't lose one so his grace now moves down to five end of turn effects for cassandra were that there aren't any she's lost the one grace so there aren't any it just means she's failed you failed right um so next up it's priorus he's our last player this turn turn him onto his moon side right go through the same thing necromancer isn't there so he doesn't lose a secrecy he hasn't got a holy relic so he doesn't lose one no start of turn instructions on his power cards so we go straight to the event as the necromancer is not present so another event card Startling news. Add a timer marker to a quest currently in play. If there is no quest in play, then instead draw a quest and roll one die to determine its location. Well, it's not looking good, is it? That means we will have three quests. 
three quests are coming into play because there are only two timers allowed on nightmares looks like we found an unlucky game for cat weasel so we fail the nightmares we weren't able to get there in time but let's be honest we didn't get much chance did we so well i suppose if the uh, if the priest had gone earlier rather than last we might have we might have got away with it but um as i say that's one that's a learn that one if i'd realized that event cards could do that i probably would have had him go first so nightmares it's been failed what happens now though is we draw three new ones and they're all in the village so first one is dark seed well at least that's got five time on it and we only need to get one progress blackening soil and withering plants indicate a dark seed has taken root nearby locate and uproot it before it flowers when you draw a search result in this location draw one fewer map cards for one success that means we'd have to get the th we'd have to get the rogue here because everybody else only rolls one one die and then if it's completed at least we move the darkness trap back, back one otherwise we get a blight it's not too bad i suppose a blight um but ideally you know we wouldn't have it at all board's too small victory point games another quest angry guardian so this is four time and again we only need one progress on it someone stole a treasure from the care of a local guardian spirit give it new treasure to placate it discard any item for one progress during your action phase in this location completed all heroes gain one grace if it expires one hero will lose a turn well we haven't even got we haven't got any gear so we're struggling a bit we might have had a charm if we'd managed to um, complete that first quest and the last one is opportunists this is take us three time again we only need one progress on it some local outlaws are taking advantage of the current fear and confusion for looting and extortion bastards drive them off before others follow suit well tell you what cassandra doesn't like the sound of these guys action one progress completed we get vanishing dust if it expires we get plus one on the darkness you know what she could possibly do this once she gets the vanishing dust then she can use that to placate the angry guardian i think does it count as treasure vanishing dust i'll have to check that but if anybody knows who's watching give us a shout i was a local guardian and somebody says here have some vanishing dust instead i probably wouldn't be too impressed but i'll check on what constitutes actual treasure right so that's the three quests that we got bloody stuck with because we didn't manage to solve the nightmares quest in time so there we go we've got three new quests there so what we're going to do um, that's the event that's done so we've still got the action part of priorities turn to go can he do anything on any of those yeah if he just yeah so we, we can get rid of this one surely all he has to do is not take an action all he was going to do was um deal with he was going to deal with the um nightmares anyway he wasn't going to do anything else or so he could do that to get rid of opportunists and get some vanishing dust he's got nothing to give the angry guardian so he can't do that dark seed so when you draw a search result in this location so you do have to succeed it was like the last turn where the rogue got two map cards he would only ever get one so he can't draw one fewer than one can he hang on just check that hmm couldn't really find out i'm not sure about that i'm not sure whether he could succeed and instead of actually drawing the map 
card just say I'm not going to draw it so therefore that's completed I think he could probably do that but because we've got five time on it I'm not going to bother because I know that it can definitely do opportunists which means for his action he's not going to do an action we're going to get a progress on this and because we get a progress that fulfills it and that means we complete it and get some vanishing dust so we have completed a quest so let's dig out some vanishing dust you can find it there's some so here's some vanishing dust so we shall put that on his player card and yeah vanishing dust discard after a failed illusion roll to make it a success it says treasure chest as well we've got there i think on the other one you know where we were talking about treasure i think we've actually got to give him a treasure chest so on the dark seed still not quite sure about that one i'll try again to find to find out but i i should imagine if you do roll a search and you decide not to take any map cards at all then you might be able to get that yes it just says draw one fewer okay right anyway that's the end of Prioris's go there is no end of turn there's nothing for stigma to do at the end of the turn so I'll just leave that there and that is the end of the hero's go so next up it's the necromancer okay so first thing we do for the necromancer is we move the darkness track up to two next he gets to roll his die so let's see what he gets he gets a four so let's have a look at everybody's secrecy the rogue's fine the wizard isn't fine the knight isn't fine and but the priest is fine so he's going to move to the nearest one he can't move through the monastery so he will move here to the village that's where he's going to go because he has spotted Cassandra the knight so he will ignore he does go that way anyway even if we'd followed the four but um, he will ignore these dice on the board at a location if he actually spots somebody he'll move as close to them as he can Cassandra's the nearest so that's where he's going so he's moved there and creates a blight of course he does so let's see what blight he creates at the village Here we are at the village and we get an evil presence right let me dig that out won't be a second and here we are with the evil presence um, what this is is it's got four might so when we attack it that's what we'd have to roll to get rid of it if you fail we'll have to draw an event and we we're having a real laugh with them and while it's in uh, while it's still on the board We've got minus one die to eluding in this location. So I'll just check it's just this location because, as you know, some of them apply to all locations. Yeah, it's just the affected location. So no eluding going on here. Though the priest might, might be able to do it because... He, he's got four dice with one of his powers which would go down to three but as it is we don't actually have to fight it we don't have to defend against it at the end of a turn or anything it's be minus one die eluding say another blight or the necromancer so that's not too bad so put that on there along with the necromancer okay so that's the necromancer's turn done and that is the end of turn two well it didn't go as well as turn one did it um <laughs> that was a bit of bad luck i think with the quest just to get that horrible event that put it out of our reach again that's a learn for me if i'd known um that event cards could do that then i would have probably done 
the quest first. But there you go. So we've ended up with two more, well, we ended up with three more quests, but we were able to get rid of one, which was opportunist. Uh, the priest just like forego for foregoed his action. So that managed to get rid of them. I think that's what you had to do. Yeah, just an action. Just spend your action on frightening them off. So we've got rid and at least we're down to two quests now. Okay, right, so I'll go and upload this and then I'll come back with a short turn review. See you in a bit. Hello everybody, Cat Weasel here, welcome back. I can already see what I'm gonna forget all the time. Anybody guess what it is yet? Yes, I forgot to put the timers on the cards again the end of the turn so three left on angry guardian and four left on dark seed right let's pop across to the player area so how did we go on during the turn well not so bad not so good first of all rathimnon he went up to the mountains and he managed to deal with the enigma blight so well done to him um, he did lose a secrecy, so he's gone down to four secrecy, but he did his job. Good stuff. What's he going to do next turn? Well, I think probably he will move from the mountains and he will go to the castle. The reason he's going to go to the castle is he's going to try and get some more powers and that's the place to get it from. So he'll pop across to the castle. He's always got teleport in reserve. So he can zoom back to the monastery if things get a bit hairy and it's looking bad on the grace front. So he's going to move to castle. Hopefully get his... Um, he would have got his secrecy back going to the castle but he'll lose it again because there's a flux cage there. I think. Yes there is. So um, he'll pop in there. And he shall try and get himself a power. So a supply cache, he'll look for one of those. I think that's what he'll do next turn. So there we go. Let's put him back sunny side up. Right, during last turn, the player who went after Rathimnon was Talon the Rogue. And here's Talon. Uh, he went down to the forest, uh, had a search. He did very well. He managed to um, get a mystery card, treasure hunt. That's currently at the ruins. We can go there and we can get some more clues. He got a clue for actually um, getting the key and getting the mystery card. But we can get more clues if we can get across to the ruins. Um, he did lose a grace because he had a horrible event card. And that meant that he had to either discard one of these and pick another one out of his deck. But I quite like these. I want to keep them. So I didn't bother, I did spend a grace. Other than that, he managed to avoid the zombies again, so that was good. And what's he going to do next turn? Well, I think next turn he will actually move to the ruins. There's more chances of getting keys at the ruins than there is at the forest. And treasure hunts there. And he's our best guy for searching. There is a, an unholy aura there and it's minus one die to fighting but again we don't have to we don't have to fight it end of turn it's not something we have to defend against it's just um it's it's just a modifier a minus modifier on fighting and he does sneak in rather than fighting so i don't think he's going to take it on all we're going to do is we're going to go to the ruins and we're going to search and Hopefully, we will get some clues via Treasure Hunt as well. So, that's what Talon's going to do. Let's flip him over so he's ready for action. Right. And after Talon, this last turn, it was Cassandra. So, let's have a look at Cassandra. Here's Cassandra. Well, she had... Um, uh, well, it was a, a bit of a rubbish turn, really. Um, she ended up losing two secrecy and she didn't manage to get rid of the blight so that's still there 
and it was a bit meh. So what's she going to do? Well, hopefully she's going to start rolling better for a start. And I think I'm going to keep her there. I'm going to keep her there because what I wanted to do is perhaps take on the dark seed and do that search thing. I think she'll probably try and do the search and she's best equipped, I think, to sort of do that. She's um, she's a bit tougher than the priest character, so I think she will stay there. Perhaps I'm not I'm, I'm I'm unsure, but I think she'll probably search and try and get rid of get maybe get rid of that quest. You can find treasure chests at the village. She might search, ignore Dark Seed, and try and get the treasure chest, and take and uh, give it to the angry guardian and get rid of that because that's on a shorter time limit i'm not so sure whether she'll take on the blights she certainly won't be taking on the necromancer she will lose another secrecy because she will be activating there with the necromancer so a secrecy will go down to three um but i think she'll stay there she'll do something in the village right so that's cassandra so let's get her ready for next turn and next, it's Priorus. Poor old Priorus got a horrible event card, and we ended up putting another time onto the initial quest, which meant we failed it, and we got three more. Um, what he was able to do was he was able to stop um, Cassandra losing a grace, so he lost one instead. Uh, I think that was to do with um, Cassandra's event card, the raid, but he took that on her behalf. What else did he do? Um, well, he sacrificed his action. I think originally on that qu on the original quest, Nightmares, he would have still got an action because it didn't specifically stay action. But the one that he did do, which was Opportunist, did stay action. So he... F he um, he sacrificed his action in order to get rid of that quest. And he managed to get himself some vanishing dust. So that could be useful. He'll he'll keep that. Or he may even trade it to Cassandra just in case. So what's he going to do this turn? Well, I don't think he's going to stay in the village. Now, a couple of things he can do. He can move to the swamp where the raids are. So let's have a look at the raids. So, the four defence and four to elude, but he does have his sanctuary, which he can use four dice for. He'd lose two grace if he failed, but I think he, can, he could probably elude them. Why does he want to go to the swamp? Well, you've got a chance of an epiphany at the swamp, and an epiphany would be very useful. Because that means he can go through his deck and pick the best one out. And with him being the priest, I imagine that there's a power in there that is very good against the undead. And as we have raids, zombies, skeletons, re revenants, vampires, etc. So on and so forth. Then I think that would be very useful. So I may well send him to the swamp. Just to have a look, see if he can get an epiphany. So he'll have a search and see if he can get an epiphany. And um, that'll be very useful, I think. right -o. And he could always find a key. You never know. So um, I think that's what we're going to do. So let's flick him over. Right, so a quick summary of what we're going to do next turn. Okay, quick summary. I think Cassandra will go first. She'll do what she's doing in the village, which I think will probably be a search action, which she will then, hopefully if she passes it, she can then discard, not bother with it, and we can get rid of Dark Seed. I think we'll do it that way, and then we'll try and do a search for a, a treasure chest or something like that. One of the others may get that in a search because some of the others are going to be doing that. If they do, then they can move to the village to placate the angry guardian. And who'll go next after Cassandra? Well, I think Priorus will. Priorus will move to the swamp. 
he'll elude the raids with any luck and then he will do a search action and he's looking for an epiphany um, after him well let's move Rathimnon Rathimnon move across to the castle gain a, gain a secrecy for moving then lose it because of the flux cage and he will be doing a search action in the castle possibility of him getting a supply cache in which case he can uh, get another power but there's also a possibility of him getting a treasure chest and he could use that later on to placate the angry guardian so that's where Rathimnon's gonna go and as for Talon our rogue what he's gonna do is he's gonna move to the ruins there's only an unholy aura there he should be fine he's gonna try and do a search there's a good opportunity for getting keys which will mean mystery cards and he's got an opportunity of therefore getting some clues off the treasure hunt mystery which will be very very useful and we can start ramping those clues up right other than that i think that's about it uh, thank you all for watching uh, thank you very much for the subscriptions and all the comments and all the views very much appreciated and i do hope that you join me for turn three of darkest night until then this is me cat weasel signing off toodaloo oh happy halloween mm -hmm.